we are back, and now I'm here with Molly and Miss Afroni, and we are going to do a mindfulness-based discussion, and Miss Afroni is basically going to help teach us and tell us what mindfulness is, and we have Riley um, off to the side. She's going to be asking us some questions to just lead the discussion. All right. Okay. What is mindfulness? So, basically, I've been teaching mindfulness in, in class for many years now, but um, we've been doing it today and yesterday with some of my classes, and I explained to them mindfulness is really just simple. It's paying attention in the present moment on purpose without any judgment. So, um, mindfulness is basically just taking a moment to be in the present and to think about what's happening right now and nothing else. It's just focusing on one thing. Are there specific ways to practice mindfulness? Yeah, so sometimes mindfulness is um, used interchangeably with meditation. And really, med meditation is just one form of practicing mindfulness. Um, there's so many different things that you can do to practice mindfulness. Yoga is a popular one. Um, something simple like coloring, you know, just for fun, is a way to practice mindfulness. Daily breathing exercises is a great one. Um, but, but really, the options are like, Unending, and you can just do a quick Google search to find a million things or use some of the apps that are out there to help you. Awesome. All right. Next question is going to be, how does it help relieve stress, especially in students? So, basically, and uh, there's a lot of science behind this, which we can, you know, discuss a little later, but um, mindfulness can actually change your brain and help your brain to function better, and there's parts of your brain that regulate stress and, um, are responsible for how you respond to stress. So if you're able to work on those parts of your brain, then you can start to react appropriately to stress where um, you know you use stress in a positive way instead of in a negative way in your life. So mindfulness is about being calm and in the moment? Yeah, that's a good way to put it, um, which is not always easy. <laughs> but it's sort of like if you think about like a gar a jar of glitter and you shake mm -hmm. it up and there's glitter all over like you constantly have so much going on in your brain and if you can find a way to calm that glitter and to kind of make it clear the jar of glitter and make mm -hmm. the make it clear able to see through if you can do that with your thoughts then you can think more carefully and relieve the stress and then really perform better whether it's musical performances or sports or you know anything like that you know like LeBron James practices mindfulness and Oprah Winfrey and a lot of actors and all different types of people um, practice mindfulness to do that. So. Going off what helps with student stress, we have the AP test coming up. How can they practice that to help them during the test? Yeah, so in the moment, if you are, um, you know, so if you're feeling like, to make, a, to make this shortened, it's, it's a great big explanation of what science has studied about our brains, but there's two parts of your brain, and some of you already know this, but there's the, well, there's many parts of your brain, but the two that we're going to talk about are the, the prefrontal cortex, which is responsible for thinking. This is an oversimplified expl explanation, but, and then also your amygdala, which is kind of like buried in your brain, and your amygdala is responsible for fear responses, emotions, and, and all kinds of things, and um, if your amygdala is overreacting, then your prefrontal cortex, your thinking part of your brain, is not going to be able to function well. So if you can calm, if you get worked up on a test and you forget a question, your mind starts to blank and you're like, I know I know this, but I just can't recall the information. If you can take a moment to do some breathing exercises and step back, take some deep breaths, then usually you can help your amygdala to calm down and then get that prefrontal cortex, the thinking part of your brain that you need to work well, you can get that back online and, you know, and then you should be able to then recall information more easily and move on with your test. So one of the most important things I always tell kids before taking a test is that, you know, one, self-talk is important. Failing a question is not failing the test. So if you get to something and you panic because you don't know it, it's okay, step back and realize that failing a question is not failing the test and you still have a whole test ahead of you to try to work with. Sorry, my mask's falling down. Um, the other thing is, is if you can take a moment back and take a few deep breaths and then uh, go back and focus on your test, that should help you to get that thinking part of your brain working again. I really like the um, failing the questions, not failing the test, because I feel like if I know I don't know one, I get discouraged. So yeah. it's a good thing to it tell is. yourself. Yeah, self-talk, right? Like, repeat that to yourself. It's good for you, yeah. So another question is, when it comes to health, 
and the stigma around mental health, do you mm-hmm. think that normalizing mindfulness can help normalize mental health? Yeah, I mean, mindful. to be honest, mindfulness is out there. Our Marine Corps uses it <laughs> um, as part of the training. Like, you know, they go and get trained on weapons and de-escalating situations and this and that and the other thing and all these crazy things and then one of their trainings is mindfulness so I mean it's already out there and it's already being used normally in lots of corporate environments they studied it in the corporate environment they studied it in the military so mindfulness is normalized Um, mental health you know we have a, a long way to go with mental health issues And I think it's important to mention that, you know, um, mindfulness certainly can be used for mental health issues, but it also can, everybody experiences emotional discomfort. And you can use mindfulness as a tool to get you through any type of emotional discomfort, any type of emotion, stress, feeling overwhelmed, feeling sad, you know, grief, grief, any of those things. You can use mindfulness to help you through those moments. And, um, you know, just to throw it out there, I, Mrs. Cipriano has an awesome tool in the library. It's the Calm app, and we actually have a subscription for it. So it, it costs a lot to get that app, but or to have that app, to have a username and password for it. But she has one that our, pay, that our school takes care of. So if you're interested in, you know, using the Calm app, you can reach out to her, I'm sure, via email, and she'll help you get hooked up to that, too. So, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, information, everyone. <laughs> awesome, right? <laughs> well, she told us a lot of awesome tips to to practice. My-